Look at this, yeah? Oh. What if I use two balls instead? Maybe one ball gets knocked out the other side. Really high. Oh. How about three balls? Maybe all the balls stick together and go out the other side slowly. Oh. How about five balls? Very funny, Papa. Let's look at the case when we have two balls colliding into the stack at velocity v. This implies an initial momentum of 2 mv and initial kinetic energy of 2 times half mv squared. Why didn't the collision result in one ball leaving the stack at velocity 2v? As far as the principle of conservation of momentum is concerned, we are okay because the final momentum is also 2 mv. The final kinetic energy, however, is going to be half m bracket 2v square or 4 times half mv square. This is called a super elastic collision because the kinetic energy increases after the collision. This is an impossible outcome for the Newton's pendulum because how are you going to explain where the additional kinetic energy comes from? The actual outcome, as we saw, was actually two balls leaving at velocity v. This implies a final kinetic energy of 2 times half mv squared, which is exactly the same as the initial total kinetic energy. This is called an elastic collision because the kinetic energy is conserved in the collision. Why wasn't the outcome of the collision 5 balls leaving at velocity 2v over 5? Again, this outcome actually satisfies the principle of conservation of momentum. If we look at the final kinetic energy, however, we realize that the final kinetic energy is going to be 5 times half m bracket 2v over 5 squared, which is going to work out to be 4 fifths of half mv squared. This is called an inelastic collision because the kinetic energy decreases after the collision. This particular outcome is actually called the perfectly inelastic collision because it results in a maximum possible loss in kinetic energy. We can tell that by the fact that the outcome is all the balls moving off at the minimum possible speed. Now, why did the Newton's pendulum display elastic collision rather than inelastic collision? Whether a collision is elastic or not depends on the colliding surfaces. Collisions between stiff and rigid surfaces, such as steel balls, is highly elastic. Collisions between deformable surfaces, such as plasticine balls, are highly inelastic. So to summarize, the principle of conservation of momentum alone actually allows for an infinite number of possible outcomes, ranging from the perfectly elastic collision to the perfectly inelastic collision. Collisions between the steel balls in the Newton's pendulum happens to be highly elastic. Can we do one ball on each side? Sure, because the balls will be going in opposite directions. The total momentum before collision will be zero. Will every ball come to rest after the collision? No, these are elastic collisions. Besides momentum, kinetic energy must also be conserved. Cool, but Papa, these balls did not go to school. Who taught them about elastic collisions and the principle of conservation of momentum? <laughs>